That boy's music is fuego. Yes, 
yes, yes. We are live, and it's been a minute since I did a show. I'm super hyped because I got two insane guests today. My name is Mike Trampy. If you don't know me, aka the producer Whisperer. This is Road to One Million Streams. I'm here with two great people. Like I said, man, Mark Gobel Music and Stoic. What is going on, fellas? How are you? What's going on, Mike? Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you. Doing? Yeah, man, my energy. You guys got to get that energy up, man. You got to get that energy <laughs> up. <laughs> Let's go. I'm playing with you guys, man. Uh, happy to be happy to be here, guys. Happy to be here. Um, like I was saying, it's been a minute. You know, I had some things that came up last month, and it's just been crazy. So um, this is the first road to 1 million streams in a while. So it's going to be a good one. I'm really excited about this because both of you guys offer something um, that I think is completely different, but you guys have both ended up at 1 million streams. So I think mm. that's interesting, and I really want to go over that on this show. Um, but yeah, man, I just, listen, I'm just excited to be here, man. Um, I guess I'll start with you, Mark. I guess mm -hmm. just give the people an introduction, man. Like, who are you? Um, you know, where are you from? I know the UK, obviously. Um, but, you know, where are you from? Kind of how you got started in music, you know, kind of give us kind of the roadmap to, you know, how you're sitting in this chair on the show right now talking to us. Okay. Um, well, um, I'm from Weymouth, which is the, the south of the UK, a little seaside town. Um, I got into music about 17 years ago or something. It was a long time ago. And I got into actually rapping myself um, just as like a bedroom rapper. Like it was nothing serious. And it was before um, UK rap really became a thing. So I got into it through that. And I was on some uh, UK hip hop forums and stuff. And um, there was a guy on there that gave me a cracked version of Reason 4. And that was like kind of where it all started. So I was just playing with that, making a ton of beats, um, decided that I wanted to do it in some capacity, like as a career. And then I went to university and studied um, music technology, um, where I learned Cubase, which is what I use now. And um, that's pretty much it. But um, after university, I, I went into teaching. I kind of left music behind. I was struggling to find an avenue to make money. And um, I'm still a teacher now, currently. I still teach two days a week. And um, luckily, I found BeatStars, though. And BeatStars was the game changer. Like, it actually allowed me to monetize my music, which I, I hadn't found a way to do before. So mm -hmm. BeatStars is the one. <laughs> You're, you're actually yeah. coming. You're actually coming up on your three-year anniversary. I saw. Yeah, yeah. No, is no, it February? No, it's. Oh, I, I believe it's November eighteenth. That's what I had okay. as your okay. sign-up date. So yeah. it, it might well have been. Yeah. Yeah, but both of you guys actually signed up in twenty eighteen. So I was like, there was some, there were some good vibes like circulating back then when you guys are both joining. So I thought that was dope, man, that you guys both joined in the same year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you said you teach. What, like, what, what are you teaching? Like, specific class, or is it just music overall, music theory, music marketing? Like, what specifically? No, I teach in a in a primary school. Um, so elementary school to you guys, I think. Oh wow! Okay. You, yeah. So um, been in that for like seven years, and it was only in September that I've gone down to work in two days. Before that, I've been working five days a week. Um, which is why my beat output has always been slow, like one beat a week. But I just been grinding on the side, <laughs> trying to build. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome, man. Uh, la last question about kind of your history that I had was: mm -hmm. Did you have any kind of like family influences, people in your close knit family? Like I talked to a lot of producers, and like, hey, their dad played the drums, or their mom was a church singer, or you know, whatever it was. Or was there anything like that in your family that kind of influenced you to get involved, like kind of with music? <laughs> No, not really. Uh, my mum always listened to a lot of music and I remember going through her like compilation CDs and um, I remember making tapes, you know, uh, like recording mixtapes and stuff. And uh, two songs really stood out to me when I was much younger. It was uh, Warren G. Regulate and it was... Uh, Beat Stars Smith. member. Shout, shout out to Warren G. He's on Beat Stars. <laughs> oh so, really yeah i brought wow. i brought him on that's my guy man Warren. Shout oh, out Warren. Wow. probably wow. not watching this but shout out to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, i think it was um will smith and jazzy jeff summertime <laughs> i'm a philly guy bro that is a Just classic song man classic. got me into into hip-hop and it all kind of went from there really i love it mm. man no super cool man thanks for um you know giving us that background and kind of giving us insight into your musical journey so <laughs> I, have the, I have the same questions for you stoic like kind of you know what's your story man um how did you get into music again even if you want to start with the influences i kind of hit him with that last but if you want to start with that any influences in your household family life close uh, friends stuff like that that kind of got you into it and kind of how you got your start man well as far as influences go i guess it could go back to the music that my parents used to listen to growing up in the house but um as for instruments, I was kind of the first person in the family to pick up any instruments or play any type of music on my own. So um, 
I've been playing guitar since I was about 10. I'm 24 now. Nice. Um, and yeah, I've been in bands. I've done a ton of stuff like that. But then sometime around high school, I decided that I wanted to get into music production after seeing a video of, um, it was Kendrick Lamar's producer using this software called Machine. So mm. I thought that was just the coolest thing. Good Kid, Mad City, one of my favorite albums of all time, obviously. And uh, Classic. I saw him using the little machine hardware. So I picked that up. And I haven't looked back since. I um, uh, Funny enough, though, about my journey is that I was in school to be a nurse. So I, I actually graduated last year from uh, college as a registered nurse. Um, oh, man, congrats. And, and, yeah, and, and I was super you know, proud of that and happy to be that. But um, right around the time that I graduated, BeatStars really started picking up. Um, YouTube was picking up. And it turned out that I could just do music as mm -hmm. my job instead yes. of you know, nursing <laughs> and uh, no, not knocking nursing, but that is, uh, you know, it, it takes some incredibly talented and tough people to be in that yeah, profession. Yeah. Fact, so yeah. kudos to them. I don't think it was ever necessarily for me. So I'm really happy that this worked out. Mm. Yeah, it's great. Cool. Crazy how stuff happens, right, man? You're headed in one direction and then you boop, get pulled yeah, the other way. And, uh, um, Funny enough, I was actually supposed to graduate the year before, but I got left back because I failed a class by two points. So if it weren't for that, I would have never started, you know, going crazy with music. And here we are. Yeah. Don't feel bad, dude. I went to two years of kindergarten. So my <laughs> <laughs> wife still makes me makes fun of me for that to this day. So that's a hard year. That's a it that's is. an under, that I'm trying to get my colors year. down. I'm trying to get yeah. my one to five, you know. Man. That's that's funny, man. man. No, dude, interesting story for sure, man. I see the guitar in the background. That's cool. You have really cool yeah, artwork yeah. too, man. That's something I'm going to dive into later into the show. Oh, uh, thank to, you. To get your insight on that and kind of how it plays into your branding. But um, yeah, before before we go a little bit further, I do have an announcement really quick. We have, um, you know, from the BeatStar side, we have a featured opportunity for Jalil. I think that's how you pronounce it. If I pronounce it wrong, I'm sorry, Jalil. But we have a featured opportunity where you can submit what are they looking for aggressive new wave high energy beats that have an element of sound design so you can submit to that uh on beatstars.world under special opportunities and it ends on november 17th so guys if even you want to submit we have these opportunities all the time i don't know if you guys know mm. where yeah. we have different artists a lot of upcoming artists newer artists um i even hate saying the word upcoming just newer artists i'd say um that are all dope so if you guys want to submit we do have that ends november 17th all right let's keep it moving uh i'm excited to talk so I think the biggest thing that sticks out to me between you guys is the differences, like I was saying in the beginning, right? So I'm just going to give you an example. Um, so, Mark, you obviously you have mm -hmm. two, 204 tracks up, about one two point million streams, about 9,400 followers. Like I said, November 18th, 2018 is when you joined. Um, you're a published member, so that's awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. YouTube, my notes say no. Has one but not active, no beats up. So then we can skip down to Stoic. And I see this uh, pretty similar numbers, a little bit more tracks, 345, one, almost 1 1.1 1 million streams, 9,100 followers. Um, again, 2018, June 4th, you signed up. But then the number that jumps out to me is 60,000 subscribers on YouTube for you. So my question is, and um, I'll start with you, Stuart, just because I started with Mark before. How, how are we on this show right now where we have somebody who has no YouTube channel and had a million streams and, and making, you know, a business and a living off of, of music and, and stuff. And then we have someone like you who has such a big YouTube, which you've mentioned, and we're here too in the same show. So what, what do you think that is, man? What do, what do you think made YouTube work for you, I guess, overall too? Um, uh, I mean, it's been said a million times, I'm sure, on shows like this, but it really is the consistency and not, not stopping. Um, I think just doing something for, you know, day in and day out over time, like there's no way you're not going to see results. I mean, think about it. Like I, I, I like to use like gym analogies. I, I, I hit the gym sometimes. So I think, you know, you're in the gym every day, you're going to start to see those results. And mm -hmm. I think that um, the same goes with everything. So, you know, it, it wasn't the quickest come up um, in YouTube. For example, I was on there for like three or four years before I even hit like a thousand subscribers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, but I was still posting just because it was fun to me, you know, and mm -hmm. then, uh, uh, once it started taking off, I started to get really serious and just that consistency over time is what I think makes uh, success. Yeah, no, dude, I, I agree a hundred percent. I think the thing that I, overall, I feel like 
producers, if you have an avenue to put your content out there um, and that presents opportunities, like why not do it? And then also, you know, YouTube is something that you can monetize the streams off of as well. So mm. it's like, why not give yourself more opportunities? I even go further than YouTube and say Audio Mac and SoundCloud, like all these platforms have customers coming to them looking for instrumentals. Tap into all of them. It doesn't cost you a thing but time. And then drive them all back to your store where you can collect that data. You know, if you're doing free emails, um, a free download for an email, or if you're collecting the pixel data, whatever it is. But that's my thought process on it. So what you're saying to me makes perfect sense, man, because the consistency will carry over. So, Mark, it's your job to tell us why that doesn't make sense from your perspective and let us know (laughs) how you went about doing things because I know you had a different approach. Yeah, well, uh, as I said earlier, um, because I was working full time um, up until just September, actually, um, my uh, output was quite slow. And I think that's probably what hindered my YouTube. I did try it. I put probably like 40 or 50 tracks up, but it was weekly. And I know on YouTube, it's good to be a bit more consistent than that, isn't it? And um, just wasn't really picking up much traction. Um, to be honest myself, I didn't enjoy it either. I didn't enjoy having to make a video and then upload it. It took me like 35 or 40 minutes to upload a video because mm-hmm. I was doing all my keyword stuff, trying to get all that right, and um, didn't seem to make a big impact for me. So at the end of the day, because my time was limited, I just thought I'm just going to focus on the music, put that up. Um, and I was lucky that I was you know, getting a decent salary from, from my job, mm-hmm. which I enjoyed. And because I lacked in time, then I invested the money and I put um, I put money into BeatStars promo and I found that really effective. Like that's pretty much my my yeah. main source of promotion. There's not a ghost mm-hmm. in my office. Don't worry, it's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> that freaked me out. Sorry. I was like, what the hell? Um, no, that's really interesting, man. So uh, when we're talking about BeatStars promo, let's be 100% transparent here. Are we talking mm-hmm. before we made the new ad system or are we talking prior to or both or both? Because, you know, both. that's because they change yeah. drastically man people who were not here don't understand how drastically they yeah change. yeah yeah massive change and initially i i found the the new one less effective initially but then um i used it more and more often um do you want me to tell you just how, how i use it now should i just go into that now yeah i was gonna say how are you actually using it are you going profile mm-hmm. are you going albums are you going tracks and if it is yeah, tracks, yeah. is it every track or do you hone in on like the top two or three so yeah well, the strategy The good thing about my um, slow release schedule in some way was that I got to pretty much advertise almost every track I put out to find the ones that really seem to resonate. And it's not always the ones that I felt are my best or the ones I thought would really do well, but I I managed to find them because of that slow release schedule. I -hmm. think sometimes if people put out a ton of stuff, they can end up burying some of the diamonds, not knowing yet that they could be you know, mm-hmm. really, really um, popular. But anyway, so I, I ran ads on pretty much every track for like five or six days. And I found the the ones that really worked. And I put pretty much put $10 on each track. And um, I think I probably had averaged like $50 a day for the past six or seven months. Wow. Probably. Yeah, a fair bit. With Obviously, I wouldn't be able to carry on doing that if I was making a loss. So I was making a good return. It was covering the cost. Um, and more and then um that's pretty much how it's been yeah so 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 when you're running it on 40 50 beats whatever you're doing at a time and you're putting money on it and then you've run it for five or six days uh are you then cutting off the ones that aren't performing well and then yeah yeah. and then yeah yeah so how many beats are you honing in on like total would you say the time like oh so um so i run i run like ten dollars a day on roughly five beats a day um but some of those beats will stay on for like months at a time if Mm -hmm. they're performing well like why take off the ones that are doing really well Mm -hmm. and i'll still continue searching i like to try out the new ones just to see like how are they going to perform but then i have my my mainstays that are the ones that draw in the most um customers and stuff like that yeah and it's always tracks i tried the profile bit but i didn't find it it was very like effective it. for me no yeah, I, don't, I don't like it man i'm not um yeah hopefully gonna have sound kits here and some other things in this in the near future hopefully some mm. more detailed targeting um, oh that so, would be really good detailed targeting would be amazing yeah. Trust me, we're way ahead of you. Um, mm. All the stuff we think about, man, because it's it's very important. It's I think what you said is really dope, man, because it's all about that testing. Like if you've ever done mm. ads, even Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, anywhere, and now BeatStars, it's all about testing. Like yeah. people ask me all the time, well, do you think I should do this track or that track? I'm like, I don't know. You tell me. Like you know your music better than I do. 
run it, look at the results, and then you tell me, well, this one was better. Yeah, yeah. There's your answer. So it's a, it's a common question. People get very scared. But it, it, listen, at the end of the day, you have to test things out at a, at a lower scale and check things out, see what they're doing, and then you can come back. And that's would be my advice is always kind of going after those. I even go like top two or three, man. But five is fine if that's working for you. Um, mm. But that's usually what we see a lot of times is that one track, two tracks, three tracks, maybe five tracks are performing really, really well on the platform for people. And that's actually generating the majority of their income. And then the, there's little sales from those that come off oh, yeah, yeah. because of all the ads and stuff. So I think that's a really um, a dope way of doing things, man. And the fact that you haven't used YouTube, it's very interesting to me because mm. um, I, I would still tell you to use it because it's a free way to send think, traffic. Yeah, yeah. And, and at the SEO of it. it. Getting yeah. back to it. Mm. It just it just makes sense to me, man. Um, and of course, too, now that we have this bead ID stuff coming out, I don't know if you guys are hip to it yet, but basically this bead ID technology is going to be able to scan beats and be able to find out wherever they're being used. So um, that could be something, too, for if someone rips your stuff off of YouTube, you don't yeah, know yeah. that they did that. You can find all this stuff now. And obviously there's mm. ways to monetize the publishing side of things and a lot of different stuff. So, um, but yeah, man, I, I, I think it's interesting for sure. Um, Stoic, man. Obviously, you're a little, a little bit different, like like we were saying. So, I mean, like, what was your strategy with YouTube? I know you said it took a while, mm -hmm. but is that is that kind of like your main vehicle for promoting and marketing? Is that like your traffic generator? Everybody has a traffic generator, unless they're mantra, and they can push the beat, and everyone <laughs> and their mother runs to it because um, the dude's been doing it forever. But everybody has a traffic generator of some sort. So, I mean, is that YouTube for you, or are you doing anything else? Yeah, it's, it's YouTube. Um, I'd say 90% it's YouTube. I have a little bit of a following on Instagram as well. So um, I, I try to stay super active on there. I feel I find that that's the best way for people to interact. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the time, like the, the core demographic of people listening to my stuff is like 18 to 24. And I don't know about you guys, but we're not sending too many emails. So a DM usually yeah. does the <laughs> trick. And uh, that's uh, a great way to like, interact with people, which I found that they love. You know, uh, if I had an artist that I was really messing with and I sent them a message and they answered, I would be pretty hyped. So, um, so, so good for networking, isn't it? For sure, uh, for sure. yeah, I don't think there's, a, I don't think there's a, like a message that I don't reply to. Um, but yeah, that, that has definitely helped. Um, yeah, but Instagram, YouTube, a hmm. uh, little bit on Twitter. I'm just starting to get into it, you know. No, like I feel that. you. I, yeah. I think it did. Yeah, but it's again, you're using free platforms to do it too, man. So there's no overhead, right? You're not spending any money unless you're doing ads and other things, which again, it's not a bad thing. Mark, just explain how it's great. And I obviously use that. Mm -hmm. So, but all your stuff is organic, right? You're, you're drumming up all that traffic to your store. Have, do you use, um, on the dashboard when you log in, do you put, you can move those widgets around. Did you move your sales up to the top? I don't know if either of you guys do this, but if you move that up to the top, um, and put that widget there. It's the first thing you see when you log in and it gives you every sale and has a message button next to it. So you can literally message every person that bought a beat from you quickly and oh, say, really? thank you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you, can give, you can give them a coupon code, make a, you can even, you can literally, if you wanted to do it, depending on how many sales you have, go through, look at every person that bought it, whatever their first name is, go in and make a coupon. You can make unlimited coupon codes. Oh, so you wow. be like, yo, here's a custom code for you for every sale moving forward, 10% off. Yeah. That's something I small. tried to, yeah, yeah. I tried to make a point of, um, just messaging everybody that's bought a beat through BeatStars or through their email. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's important, isn't it? You know, they're spending their hard-earned money. Mm -hmm. um, they get an automated one through MailChimp, but it's mm -hmm. not quite the same. So not just try and send send something just saying a big thank you. They're the ones making us live our dream, aren't they? So. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. exactly. check, check out that widget, though, on the dashboard. I think it could save you guys time in um, doing the coupon thing. Or if you just want to make yeah. it a standard one. I totally get it. It takes time. But... That instant way, I, that's why I love that widget where you can just hit everybody uh, in, in one direct message. Now, it is the DMs on mm. Beatstars, so if they read it, that's another thing. Hopefully, they will. But, yeah, man, it's great to follow up and give great customer service. I think that's like mm. a part that we get lost in the in the cycle, right? Like, we're all about marketing mm. and making the beats and doing all this stuff. But it's like, ah, the customers. It's like, yo, that's the most important part at the end of the day, you know? So yeah, definitely. That's definitely. a good point, man. Mm -hmm. Um all right, what was I going to ask? So, oh, yeah, I want to go over schedules. So, Star Rock, I'll just stay with you really quick, man. Like, what's your schedule looking like now, like your consistency of, of your uploads? And has it changed drastically at all from when you kind of started and really started seeing the traction? Um, and explain why, I guess, like kind of why you had that schedule. Yeah, so uh, is it cool if I, like, speak specifically on YouTube? I mean, it ties into BeatStars, but. Yeah, absolutely. It's, dude. it's my YouTube upload schedule, which I found out 
when I first started, um, I was doing every single day, sometimes twice a day, just to put as much out there as possible. I kind of figured, you know, if you cast a wide net, probably the best way to catch a fish. So mm -hmm. I uh, was doing as much as I could for as long as I could. Then when I started seeing a little traction, um, I experimented with every day. I kind of realized that was a little bit unattainable because making a beat every day for, let's say, a year straight, mm -hmm. that's a lot of ideas, man. But mm. I found that the sweet spot, and I think a lot of my peers on YouTube, like in my circle, um, think that every other day is the perfect sweet spot of like, like Mark was speaking about, giving a beat time to breathe and not getting buried under the, you know, the rest of them, as well as keeping that consistency up and staying in people's faces because that's really what you want is as many eyes on you as possible uh as mm -hmm. i've learned um so every other day i've been doing that for about two years now um with only a few misses i'd say and only a couple weeks off here and there but um actually this month of november i'd like to do a little shameless plug i am posting <laughs> every every day on youtube um we're 10 days in i haven't missed a day so we're gonna see what the yes. next money bring which has been nice. tough too because i was just um <laughs> I, I performed at a couple shows this weekend with the homies. So uh, I wasn't home. I was in San Fran this whole weekend. Actually, I'm in LA now. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been cool, uh, a cool little challenge. And uh, yeah, but besides that, my schedule is usually, um, you know, I'll make some I'll make some music from nine in the morning to, let's say three or four. Take a little break and then come back at night. Um, yeah. You a late night dude, or you up early? Nah, um, well, I prefer making music earlier in the day. I feel like that's when I'm most creative but same. and and productive at, at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, nah, I'm not too I'm not too much of a late night. No. Nah. OK. Yeah. I'll send you that invoice for that advertising time at the end of the show, bro. Man. <laughs> with you. Come on. Right. <laughs> I'm messing with you. You can drop whatever you want, bro. The time is cool. yours, man. Cool. cool. Uh, no, nah, dude. Super cool, man. Mark. So obviously you're. We've distinguished that you guys have a different approach and release schedule. So he said mm. every other day. So every other day is what, three a week, three and a half, I guess, three. I don't know. It's around that. So, yeah, it's a great you number. Said, you said you're about one a week. So, what kind of, how, how was your approach then, I guess, with things since you're not doing YouTube, you're not doing some of these other things, kind of how you lay out your work schedule? And well, currently, because I'm still working two days in, in my other job as a teacher, I have three days set aside for music of the week. Other two days are like family time. So, there's three days. Um, I'm trying to up it to, to two a week now. Um, obviously, Mike, you know that I kind of specialize in beats with hooks. So yep. sometimes there's a bit of a slower turnaround because you have to send them off to the artist, get them back, mm -hmm. mix it all together and stuff like that. So I'm aiming for two if I can. But if if the quality isn't there, if I'm not happy with it, then it's still going to be one. Like quality is king for me. And um, I just want to maintain that. And it's worked for me so far. Like I've been blessed that it's worked at such a slow release schedule because um initially i was really disheartened i was doing like research and everything said three or four weeks a week and i was like i can i, can, I can't do that i'm never going to be able to do that but luckily it has panned out obviously with advertising and stuff so i'm aiming for two if i can now now that i've got a bit more time but um yeah one or two for me a week yeah i i don't think there's a concrete number man you know what i mean mm. like i know people who upload like once a month and are successful but yeah, Again, there's there's certain you have to have a certain customer base and other ways of marketing. Your marketing might be completely just off platform and you have such a big fan customer base that you don't need to upload a lot. But I personally think it is easier when you have I think two to three is the sweet spot. And that's why mm. I, I tell people about eight to 12 beats a month is ideal. Mm. Um, it's just tough when I have conversations when people hit me up like, man, I've been on beat stars for two years. I haven't sold a beat. The shit is, this is a fraud. This is, this is cap. This shit does not work. And I'm like, give me your profile. Like I go look and they have like 11 beats of them. Like, yo, you have 11 beats up in two years. That is definitely not going to cut it. Mm -hmm. So anybody watching who's in the same boat and having that mind state is just like, yo, upload a beat every day for a year straight. If you can't do that, then do it every other day. Like Stoic said, and if you can't mm. do that, do it at least once a week, like Mark said. So you have to have some type of schedule consistency here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's what we're trying to like, you know, beat in everybody's heads is just have a schedule. Don't just kind of you know, freestyle and just like, oh, I'm going to throw it up this day and this day and that day. Like, no, have a schedule. Um, I think that makes the most sense. Um, do you guys use, I guess when you're making, actually, let me reverse this question. So Stoic, mm -hmm. Do you focus like on a niche um, for when you're uploading? Is, is that something you found has worked for you? Uh, YouTube, two beat stars, and vice versa. 
Um, or are you kind of all over the place or are you just kind of making whatever you want or like Mark does beats with hooks. That's what sticks out to me. A lot of mm. collaborations, a lot of mm. people hooks. What do you feel like is like your calling card if you think you have one and, and what people really gravitate to you uh, for? And is that something you focus on or kind of just happen? If that's if that's true. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I don't really have I don't really have an, a niche. Um, I definitely like try to I tried to have one for a bit at the beginning. I would just stick to, you know, three or four different types of sounds. But uh, I realized that the more that I do it, as I was posting every other day and um, making music every day, it was just like I felt it would be kind of boring to just do the same thing over and mm -hmm. over again. So having mm -hmm. like, you know, literally you go on my page right now, I have everything from like Frank Ocean to, I don't know, mm -hmm. Baby Keem to Smino, like all over. Like, everyone knows I go all, all over the place. But um yeah, I, I do think it is important to have an ish. Like, I, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of going to contradict myself a bit here, but totally fine. I do, I do think that it is uh, important to have a niche. In the same breath, I have been able to, you know, do what I did without having too much of one. So I think really at the end of the day, it's that good music is going to, you know, speak for itself. And yeah, you know, people are, you know, um, by now I feel like I, at least on YouTube I could kind of post whatever and people are going to listen to it because. I'm a, it's associated with my name, but um, if you're starting up, I think that experimenting is honestly key because you don't know what people are going to like from you. You know, uh, my biggest beat on YouTube mm -hmm. has like 1.2 million and it's like uh, at the time, it's like a Sino code of the friend beat. And at the time I'd never made one of those before. And then, you know, uh, it just turned out that that's what people liked. So yeah, I think experimenting is is key. Um, and it's just it. having a niche and yeah, it's super important just to find what you like making as well, isn't it? Like what you yeah. really enjoy. Because if you're going to be doing it every day, mm -hmm. then you you got to know what what sound you really enjoy making as well. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it could get tiring really quick if you're doing the wrong. Like, yeah. say you know, I'm not the biggest. Um, what's something that's popular? And I'm not the biggest. Like, uh, I don't know. Like super heavy. Like trap beat fan and if i was really forcing myself to make those because i think that's what would pop off hmm. i'd be pretty miserable making music every day so yeah i think this is the happy medium for me yeah ha happiness is what you want to aim for man you don't want to be Definitely. miserable you can get cool making money but you're miserable no thank you like no nah, i'd rather make less yeah. money and just have that's, more fun yeah, yeah definitely the way yeah. i look at it too man yeah make, yeah makes total sense you know what's interesting though man about you i for for the longest time and i'm listen i'm fully transparent about everything but i couldn't I knew your name, but the way I always remembered you and having dope beats was your artwork. Like I'd always be like, "Oh, that's the guy with the bright, like, cool artwork." Like, but then eventually, and I used to call you Stoic, and I and, and yeah. Danny yelled at me. He's like, "Bro, that's not his name." I'm like, "Oh shit, I'm, in. I'm horrible with names." You're not the only one. I'm. I'm. Listen, everybody calls me Tramp my whole life, bro. So it's just, I, I, I get it. But yeah, that's a hard one. Yeah, it's it's been tough. I've, I've had a rough life. Um, but sure. <laughs> but no, let's really quick before we transition, I guess, into the next set of questions and stuff. We're gonna listen to some beats, but like. How do you think artwork plays into your branding specifically? And Mark, I would love your input too, if you feel like it's important and mm -hmm. something that you look at really hard, but you know, with your stuff, so it gets very, it's just very artsy. It's very, it's colorful. Um, it's, I mean, look at the artwork on your wall. Like it's stuff like that. Just stuff like that jumps out to me. And I just want you to kind of explain how, how it, I think it's helped your brand because I think it has um, because that's how I remembered you. And I feel like you can tell somebody what you're about and who you are without even ever pressing play, right? From your name, from your beat names, from your artwork, all these different things. So I guess like just talk to us mm, about that. Was there, yeah, was there a thought process into this, man? Or was it just like, yo, I'm gonna, I love art. I like making cool artwork and this is what I'm going to do. Or was there no, a plan? definitely a thought process. I mean, everything that you just said kind of proved it. And I was, I was kind of happy that you said all that because it's like, mm -hmm. You know, uh, from the artwork to you know jumping off the off the screen, just like the, the ton of colors. Like, of course, that's all that's all on purpose. Um, it is it is also just my preference, my taste. I, I you know I do like um, vibrant pieces and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, for in particular, my um, my avatar on Instagram, I'm I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, but it's. Uh, Pretty much the same color scheme as this painting back here yep. and um i saw that about two years ago on my feed it was an artist i follow from somewhere overseas but he hmm. uh he was selling it and i think i bought it for like something like 60 bucks 
And I was like, this is what, you know, this is going to be associated with my brand because I don't know, like you, if you're on Instagram and you're scrolling through stories, that is going to be right in your face. You are not yep. going to miss a story mm. from Stoic Beats because this thing is so bright and so weird. It's like an alien looking thing. I don't know what the hell it is. Uh, same <laughs> it's thing with it's, YouTube. It's a, it's a Stoic. I always thought that. I thought that. I, story, I, I yeah. thought I'm like that must be what a stoic is. It's like a character from some like a yeah. children's book or something. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's just they, yeah, the picture and the name don't relate, but I guess now they do. But yeah, it. yeah, definitely intentional. Um, I think it's hmm. really important to have artwork uh, thumbnails that uh, grab people's attention, and uh, like you said, names um, like like beat titles. Uh, just anything you could do to get the edge over someone else that you feel might be a little less, you know, they're, they're not trying to uh, uh, innovate as much because that's really what it is about, you know, innovation. So, Dude, that's yeah. all it is. It's, um, you know, creation and using your brain and your mind and having ideas is free. Like you can mm -hmm. do all that. So I think a lot of people skip all that and just go right to the beats and uploads and right. artwork secondary mm -hmm. to them. I'm not saying that can make or break you because I know a lot of people don't give a shit about their artwork, but they do great. But I just know a lot of other people that even with their titles, like I only use one syllable words or stuff that's very quick and easy to remember. And then you associate it with, uh, you know, their branding or coloring or something. So mm -hmm. I just think it's extra levels of stuff that you can do um, to, to make, to make it stick out. And um, I know Bufo's in here. He's a, a great guy, publishing member, always in our chats talking I remember meeting him years ago at a at a Beat Stars meetup, and he had um, a hoodie, and this is very important for everybody. He had his own hoodie, and it's Bufo on the beat, and Bufo is actually like a, a frog, I guess. You lick and you trip off of it. It's crazy. There's a whole story to it. I don't know. I'm probably messing it all up, so Bufo don't yell at me. But basically, that I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, is that I'm like, that is cool as shit, man. Like, it's a frog. I'm like, what? Like, but it made me interested in him mm. before I even knew like who he was. But also, it's like, yo, his brands, like every producer artists everything included even myself like i should have a producer i have a b stars hat but i should have like a producer whisper a shirt rock mm -hmm. your own merch rock your for own sure. branding man why are you gonna mm -hmm. pay like all these people tons of money and you know the shit's getting made for pennies and when you can make your own stuff and rock your own stuff and be that brand so it's just something else i wanted to throw out there's Bufo. yeah yeah the psychedelic <laughs> toad see i was i was close but um but it's actually oh sorry to cut you off but no, it's no, actually funny it's funny you say that because i'm uh I have some shirts dropping next week. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna be selling them through the. This man is plugging hard. <laughs> yeah, 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 we, yeah, we, we got listen, some. Listen, listen, <laughs> just send me three, and we don't have to charge you for the ad time. No, right, I'm, I'm gonna fair. buy one, bro. I don't want one. I'm gonna buy one. Fair. I'm gonna buy no, one. No, no, but it, but it reminded me of that because it has it also has a weird little character on it. It has my name and. I, th I think you'll mess with it, but Love yeah, it. I'll, I'll have to send some to both of you guys. Please, bro. I'll, 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 I'll rock it on a show, man. I I, I don't like clothes. Love I'm it. like I'm like uh, who are the guys? Uh, Zuckerberg and who was the other one? Uh, Steve Jobs. Oh, man. I only got three shirts. That's me, bro. Because yeah. it's, I have more important things to worry about. Like I don't give a shit. Only only like. <laughs> My wife, Isn't that a thing? <laughs> like uh, they only make a few decisions a day or something like that. It cuts down on decisions. I cut down on all my decision yeah. making. Bro. Yep. <laughs> But no, man, super cool. So, Mark, like, just to piggyback off this, because I want to get into some mm. beats. Um, do you have any input or anything else you want to add on the branding side from, like, artwork to titling to anything like that you really focus on or the kind of the secondary or? No, no, it's, de it's definitely really important. I don't think um, my my artwork is as recognizable as Stoics is. Like, he's obviously got his own, like, color scheme, everything down. To me, the most important thing is that the, the artwork represents the mood of the beat so people can find the beats they want more easily. Um, I might have the old school ones in black and white, just like, you know, that kind of thing. The picture has to be a really quality picture, obviously not pixelated or rubbish looking. And in terms of um, titles that I use for my beats, it's generally based on the hook. Um, whatever the artist sends back, then obviously you take take whatever fits best for the the title of the beat, really. So that kind of takes care of that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hey, agree. I, I like, uh, Mark, I like what you said about, like, the quality of the image. Mm -hmm. I feel like mm -hmm. some people kind of overlook that. I've seen some grainy-ass pictures. And yeah, yeah. On the beat art, uh, that is not it. That, that yeah, has unless, to be unless it's weird. an NFT. <laughs> I'm not, if it's an NFT, it's one of those little granulated yeah. NFT images. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then, then I guess that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you should do some NFTs, dude, for your stuff, bro. That's I like, when I look at your I'm stuff, I, I feel like it's an NFT. So Yeah, I can maybe, work on it. Maybe we can do a Stoic <laughs> producer whisper collab where it's your character and my character. Might be a good idea. <laughs> I like it, bro. Now you gotta send me a check. 
Yeah, I got you, bro. I got you, man. We got this on film, man. Delete this. Uh, we're good, man. <laughs> I'm joking. All right, listen, I got one more announcement. They make me do these announcements, or I don't have a job, so I got to do them. Uh, join the new Beat Scars Discord chat with um, other members of the community. Find collaborators or more. The link to join could be found here. I'm assuming Marcus is about to drop that into the chat. Um, dope things going on Discord. We actually have some private Beat Stars publishing Discord room. So if you're part of the publishing program, Reach out to me. I'll hit you guys up both directly. If I haven't invited you yet, I kind of sent out like a mass email. Um, so I'll make sure to get you guys in there. Thank um, you. But yeah, Discord, we're definitely going to be going heavy in. Love it. Uh, listen, to some, uh, listen to some beats, guys. I want to listen to some beats. Um, let's see what we got. So I went through your stuff. And you guys tell me if you don't want me to play these beats. Uh, Mark, mm -hmm. die, die for this with hook. Run in. Yes, popular one, yeah. Run in with hook. Mm -hmm. Headshot with hook. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. it's fine, yeah. yeah. Stoic. I got Stars, Hop Out, and Bad Habit. Uh, bad Habit, switch that to... Uh, uh, I just made one last night called Gemini. All right, well, what we'll do is we'll go through... Um, yeah. there, these I think I ones... just listened to that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Checked it out, yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, it sounded good. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, these are the ones that show up in your relevance uh, when you can filter up to relevance. So that's yeah. the first three. Let me share my screen and then we'll leave. Only because Bad Habit's like two years old. I don't know if that's a pretty accurate representation mm. at this point. Got it. Let me see what the screen looks like here. Yeah, oh, whatever you play. I don't, I don't care. No, nah, we'll go through it, bro. I got All Mark's right. already pulled up. So we'll rock with Mark's. Cool. Um, we'll take a brief break while listening to them, get some feedback, uh, and then we'll go into yours, and then we'll probably wrap this thing up, man. Let everybody know where you're, uh, they can get in touch with you and stuff like that. But um, all right, so we'll do dive mark, run in, and then headshot. I think was the one I said. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. If you guys could just mute while the tracks are playing, just so there's no feedback. Uh, you can stay on camera. Obviously, we're on the side. We're good to go, man. All right, cool. Let's listen to dive for this. I can show you, don't you hold me back, no. I would die for this, I would die for this. I can show you, don't you hold me back, no. I would die for this, I would die for this. I can show you, don't you hold me back, no. I would die for this. I would die for this. One cup on the face, baby. Next track up called Running. Let's go. I can't stop wondering if you think about what you're running from.
Alright, last one is headshot. Perfect number. Give me three, the perfect number. Yeah, I got six more bullets in my gun. Hit the target, perfect aim. If, 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 if you make it through the headshot, you, you won't be the same. Hit the target, perfect aim. If you make, 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 if you make it through the headshot, you won't be the same. That is nasty, bro. That part right there, that is nasty. Target perfect aim. If, 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 if you make it through the headshot, you, you won't be the same. Hit the target perfect aim. If you make, 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 if you make it through the headshot, you won't be the same. Crazy. You're about to make me dust off the mic, bro. Gonna get in the booth. That was fine. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. But um, how 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 are you making all these beats, man? Really quick. Just curious. Like kind of what's your what's your setup? You said reason, I think you said earlier, or was um well it was it was reason right at the beginning. I've been using Cubase for Cubase, like that's right. uh 10 or 12 years or something. Um generally like uh, my main inspiration, uh, though you can't necessarily hear it in those tracks, it, I used to sound more like that or try to sound. It was um, Scott Storch, a uh, big Scott Storch fan, and uh, it was massively important to me to be able to play the keys. So generally, uh, a lot of composition and stuff in, in my beats. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I mean, shout out to the, the guy who did the scratching on that, DJ J. Reese, he did the scratching, mm -hmm. and Joe Dirt. Did the vocals on that one i've done quite a lot of hooks with him um because he's got that grimy it's kind of like mob deep ish um sound and um yeah I, I just love love making those beats with hooks you kind of get a bring to life the vision of the beat before you yep. even release it and it just gives a like a hint of the potential because I, I release it also without the hook as well so it's smart it, man you're giving people yeah. both options for sure yeah yeah no, listen, dude, I think beats with hooks are so undervalued right now in the market. And something I think we're going to see from now moving through 22, 2022 in the future is more artists getting involved on beat stars, right? So more artists doing beats with hooks, mm -hmm. artists even leasing their own hooks, even like doing custom songs to work with people. I personally had my artist who's in the studio today doing nothing but um, like kind of like one to two small sentences so we can take that and send it out to producers so they can chop it up and make samples with it yeah, yeah. djs can take it and scratch it there's all these different things that artists can use their voice for it's their best it's their best weapon right it's their best instrument so i think we're going to start seeing a lot more of that uh liz rodriguez who was on eminem's marshall mathers lp and works with eminem she just joined and released a couple beats of hooks hmm. uh, with some members so a lot of people are paying attention to that so i think it's i think it's really cool man you've been listen dominating that that market in my opinion so um and giving the people what they need and it's dope man do you send out packs like loot packs or samples do you do anything like that or you're really dude, <laughs> if you're, you're playing this stuff right you said you're playing it yeah yeah yeah, yeah all like all the choirs and stuff what are you um, doing what are you doing man? we gotta talk bro. i don't know well, just... <laughs> we gotta talk uh, like if i make something good i want to keep it for myself <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure I, I feel you man but it's like there's so many different ways to go now listen i'm not trying yeah, to talk yeah. about anything, but there's so many ways to collaborate with people and lock into where you actually mm. have more avenues of opportunity that can lead to success so yeah yeah so, side convo bro but listen fire beats thank uh, you love what you bring to the platform as always brought to the platform man so it's always a pleasure having you know playing your beats and having you on the show. So thank you, man. Thank you. Hell yeah, bro. All right, Stark, man, you're up, bro. We're going to play Stars 
We're going to play – what were the other ones? Was it Hop Out? And then you said you wanted to go back to the latest beat, right? Um, you could actually do that one over there called Layup if you scroll down a touch. There we go. Yeah, that's This cool. one right here? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Let's do it, man. Lay All right. Yeah, this is a whole vibe, man. That joint's crazy. What are we what are we playing next, man? Did you want to just start back up at top or do you have anything specific? Uh you could do uh you could do hop out. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, that was on my list. Let's check that out. Push your T. I'm right. interested to hear this one. Let's go. Switch up. Yo, this is this is Method Man and Conway all day, bro. is crazy that yeah, was nasty. nasty that's my favorite one so far bro <laughs> yes. that's my favorite one you what could else? end it with stars too stars yeah that that was yeah. one uh popped up as like your top b man has a lot of streams mm. and stuff too donda that's kanye cool. west okay i'm interested to hear this man let's go stars Surprise. 
Absolutely crazy, man! Both both of you yeah, guys. Yeah, that was wow. beautiful. That was amazing. That was amazing. Yeah, it was. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so really enjoyed that one. Meditate into that. Like, like a whole curation <laughs> behind that, man. The six beats I just heard was just like a whole journey. It was really dope, man. Yes, sir. Is that you? Is that you playing the guitar too? That's you. Uh, in some parts, I believe there's a there's a sample, obviously, by the homie Resky. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I forget because I I threw like on that first beat layup. Um. There's my guitar in there. I, I sometimes forget where it ends and starts. Mm -hmm. I think I'm on there, though. Yeah. Fire, bro. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> those those switch-ups are crazy, man. I wasn't expecting them. That really... That oh. really... Yeah, I was just having so, fun with it. <laughs> fire, man. Yo, so something something that I always do on this show, and I don't even know if it ever pans out because I don't follow up with people. I probably should. But I always try to link the two people on the show. It, well, when I book the show, I try to find people who don't know each other and are kind of doing things differently if I can. Um, and obviously your approach to stuff was different. Um, but I hear a lot of similarities too, man, and kind of your taste in music and just kind of what you do with your music. So I would love to, you know, have you guys collaborate and um, yeah, yeah. obviously if sure. you end up doing it, like let me know and make sure to repost it for you, put on some playlists, get you some love. So it's it's in your hands. I kind of leave it up to people. No one ever comes back to me though. So maybe you can be the first. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that would be cool. well, that sounds good to me. The last time I was on one of these um was with the homie uh Steez Wave. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, we, we've been in contact ever since then. Uh, I think we talk like at least once a week. So amazing. Yeah. So that's, that's some cool stuff. That's what it's about, bro. It's building relationships, yeah. man. And being able to, For you sure. know, work with people and not, not everybody's competition. Um, you know, oh, it's, no. it's yeah. so much to go around in this industry, man. And just so much cool stuff to create. Um, I tell people to work with as many people as you can you talk to as many people as you can, you know what I mean? Mm. So no, man, it's, it's super cool. You know what else do? This is the first show. I just realized this. The first show, Road to One Million Stream Show. So this is episode 16, 17. The first show that not one of the producers started on FL Studio. Every single wow. show. Wow. I think I had, so if we're doing like, I used to do three people, then two people. I think there was only one person out of the first 15 or 16 episodes. So two to three people on the show. I can't do math. Like 50 people maybe total. And mm -hmm. one person didn't use FL Studio. Now it makes three. And the first time nobody on the show yes. has. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's interesting. I, I, I didn't know that. Obviously, I wouldn't know that. So I think that's really interesting how that panned out. I know that people watch the show in the chat are like, yep, like every show. I'm like, what you start FL Studio? They're like, yep. I'm like, <laughs> knew it. That's funny. This is different, though. But uh, guys, we got like five minutes left. So what I like to do at the end of the show is um, 
you know, I'll start with you, Stoic. Just let the people know how they can get in touch with you. You know, if you want to give out your Instagram, YouTube, um, anything like that. And then something else, too. If you're open to collaborations to fund the community and just people reaching out to you to send you packs, loops, whatever it is, just let them know how they can do that. Um, because, you know, a lot of people in here are hungry. They want to work. They're talented. Um, of you know. So, yeah, just let them know. Huh? Talk to the people. Yeah. Um, so what up, guys? I'm on um, Instagram and Twitter as at Stoic Beats. Super simple. My YouTube channel is Stoic Beats as well. If you've never seen any of my uh, uploads, go check those out. Um, the best way to contact me is definitely through DM. You could try email, which I have in my um, my, my uh, it's in my YouTube uh, descriptions. But uh, definitely just DM me. That'll work best. <laughs> and I'm always open to collaborations, like send samples through. If you make samples, loops, whatever it is, like I love that stuff. I listen to them all. So definitely hit me up through there. Awesome. Thanks for coming on the show, bro. It was great talking to you, man. I, 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 me. Of course. Dude. I learned a lot, man. We're going to do that. Uh, we're going to do that stoic producer whisper. <laughs> uh, yeah. We're going to do that collaboration on some merch, man. I'm joking. Stoic I'm that collaboration. I love it, dude. Super cool. Thanks again, man. Mark, bro, sa same question, man. Just kind of. You know, where can people find you? What else you're working on? You know, again, collaborations if people want to reach out to you or have any interests, have questions for you, stuff like that, man. Just talk to the people. Yeah, so Instagram is the best place to find me. It's just Mark underscore, underscore sorry, Gobel underscore music. Um, uh, my email is markgobelmusic at outlook.com. So you can reach me through there. Uh, you can send me sample packs and stuff. I, I might, like you said, Mike, I probably need to branch out and uh, collaborate a bit more. That's something that I haven't really done much um so you can find me on there dm is the best place to to get a hold of me and i'm always looking for talented artists for hooks as well so if you are one of them reach out let's work amazing i'm gonna link you with my artist man actually both of you because uh that first beat you played stoic is 100 in his lane i just text dandy during the show like nice. i need i need beats like that please he signed on the publishing side too sony so um super okay. dope super dope artist his name's jay tech and then um Mark, he's actually like I was saying, doing beats with hooks, so maybe we can collab on that mm -hmm. too. And he's on mm -hmm. he's on beat stars too, so it's pretty dope, man. So cool, yeah, cool. Hell yeah, man! Always trying to connect the dots, man. But thank you for <laughs> trying. Thank you for being on the show, Mark. Too. I know um, we tried to do this last month. Some things came up. You were super super patient and just helpful, man. So I appreciate you, bro. Oh, grateful um, to be here. Thank you. Of course, man. And if you or Stoic need anything, um, obviously you're on the publishing roster. So if you do make loops, Mark and stuff like that, I want to send them. Obviously, you're talking to Danny Stoic. But my, yeah. my, my line is always open, guys. If you ever need anything or want to send some stuff through, we're always, you know, looking to help build collaborations and stuff for you guys. That sure sounds thing. great. Beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, that's the end of the show. Almost 4 p.m. Thank you to everybody in the uh, in the crowd, I guess you could say, or in the chat. Uh, we appreciate y'all always tuning in. Hope you got something out of the show. I know I did. Thank you again to Stoic. Thank you again to Mark Goble um, and Marcus, who was on the back end that nobody saw, who was doing a lot of cool stuff for us. So I appreciate you guys. And we'll see you next time, man. Everybody have a great week and weekend. Talk to you soon. Peace. Take care. Bye-bye.